Hello everyone, welcome back to Eva Talks. We have today a very special guest, Nancy Drepio. She is a seasoned market research professional with over 24 years of experience in the industry. With a career spanning 14 years in business to business exhibition sector, Nancy currently serves as CEIR's Senior Research Director, which she leads the way in conducting industry-wide studies and reporting on current trends in the exhibition industry. Thank you, Nancy, for taking our time and joining us today. It is so, uh, it is so nice to have you. It's a pleasure to be here, um, Radhika. And just so you know, since I've been promoted to vice president of research, I've served on that road for mm -hmm. a little bit. So, yes, I'm excited to be here, excited to share insights with you that SEER offers the industry. So thanks for letting me be here. Uh, very, very congratulations for the same. And we are so glad to have you. All right. So uh, a little more about Nancy that I would like to share, and that is as a well-respected industry speaker, Nancy has delivered countless presentation on various topics related to exhibition industry. She's an active member of the Marketing Research Association, MRA. In the past, she has participated in the International Association of Exhibitions and Events, IAEE, Future Trends Task Force and served as a member of Convention Industry Council, CIC Research Committee. With her wealth of knowledge and experience, Nancy is a valuable asset to the industry and a sought after speaker for conferences and events. Thank you again, Nancy, for joining in. And I suppose with this, I would firstly like to know if you could like, you know, walk us through your professional journey and what attracted you to the event space. Okay, well, it, it's been an interesting professional journey for sure. Um, I actually thought at the outset of my career that I would become a politician. And I had my undergraduate degree from Georgetown and was very active in politics and the mm -hmm. like and went on to law school thinking that would be my backup profession. Mm -hmm. But a fork in the road uh, happened uh, my second year in law school. A gentleman came in, an international market research uh, firm came in for a lunch and learn at the law firm, uh, at the law school. And I was just, you know, intrigued by what they did. And so I interned there and ultimately left law school. And I've been in market research ever since. So I did B2B research with this small organization. It was a boutique uh, market research firm in New England, the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But six years following that, I ultimately found my way to an organization called Diversified Communications. Mm -hmm. um, based in Portland, Maine, they are like the uh, organizer for trade shows and seafood internationally. So I joined that organization managing their market research for a uh, function. And it was amazing. I don't know if you've ever heard of Diversified. They're a great company. So I basically have been applying my market research skills in the trade show industry ever since. You know, I became a trade show junkie. It's been a oh, massive awesome. privilege. But after 10 years, I went back out into consulting. I started my own firm. And Center for Exhibition Industry Research was one of my clients, and they okay. ultimately recruited me. And so now, that's been since 2011. Holy Spokes, that's, that's a long so great. Right? That so, is so great. Yeah, so that's my journey. Maybe more than you want, but you asked what was my, my, my journey, and that is it. You know, the trade show industry is not necessarily, it's kind of like a hidden industry to a certain extent. Yeah. People find their way yeah. into it, yeah. but um, I love it. Uh, it's an important uh, part of economies, you know, in India, I yeah. mean, all over the world, they're a gateway to commerce, right? Bringing buyers yeah. and sellers together. So it's a privilege to serve in this role. Yep. So this is one thing that has been a little common for all my speakers. And that has been that, you know, they found they were not planning to be here and they've just found their way somehow. So this is one thing that through my podcast, I have tried that, you know, at least we can talk more about the industry that if, you know, people are joining in, they have a lot of uh, venues here to go ahead, 
move ahead in the market they think that you know it's a very small industry it won't it can't be a professional career to be you know sticking on to so i think uh, people like you have uh, been an inspiration for all of us that yes it we can be here for a long run and it could be helping and it's a professional to be there uh, you know industry so that's so good and it has been very nice to hear how your journey started so with this nancy i have another question for you for those who may not be familiar can you give us a brief overview of what the center of exhibition industry research does and its mission absolutely so cer was established in 1978 Its mm-hmm. sole mission is to monitor trends in the trade show industry. Mm-hmm. We're not for profit. We're not selling selling anything other than to provide insights on what's happening. We follow best practice research approaches, quantitative mm-hmm. research wise. We have an economist and the like, and it's basically a, a hotly sought after resource um, to provide trends. So our focus has been predominantly North America, mm-hmm. more so in the United States, but uh, recently. We also do research of global scope. Uh, for instance, mm-hmm. we've done an attendee acquisition insight mm-hmm. series, and that's global. We did a global virtual event study as well. Mm-hmm. That too was global. So, okay. um, Skip Cox, who is a mentor and an icon in the industry with exhibit surveys, has you know they they define the um, event. ecosystem which includes organizers exhibitors attendees and suppliers to the industry so mm-hmm. our research provides insights to all of those stakeholder groups to you know position oh, yeah. what they do for business success oh that's great that's great great to know about it and great to know that we have such kind of researches that are going on and can be accessible so how uh, how does that exactly work like uh, if somebody wants to know about the research is there some site that we can go around or do you know know more about it absolutely we have a website you know www.cercir.org which is the repository for all of our research we've got uh, hundreds of uh, reports that have been you know re- published over the course of multiple years so again exactly. just just yeah if i could just um repeat to the issue of who accesses our research in addition to what i mentioned we're also an important resource uh, for major media outlets such as bloomberg wall street journal mm-hmm. reuters and the like come to us on a regular basis even the federal reserve here in the united states uh, the atlanta branch came to us in particular during the uh, the pandemic we were really relied upon extensively during that time to find uh to understand you know the impact of the pandemic um yes uh, and i mean it was rather severe right even in india i mean all over the yeah. world it essentially yeah. shut down any group meeting activities including trade shows so we monitored that and ran reg- regular tracking studies that information was you know looked at very closely by those entities i mentioned as well as the index which quantifies the size of the industry and the economic impact of the industry um in the united states so that gives you a little snapshot yeah that was really insightful about how it works where does the information can be you know gathered from and who is actually accessing it that is so good to know So with this I have one more question. How does customer engagement fit into your organization's overall trade show marketing strategy? Well, you know, remember we provide insights. So yeah. to the issue of customer engagement, I mean, we provide insights to the stakeholder groups on how mm-hmm. to assure engagement is done as best as it can be in light of current marketing trends right so mm-hmm. we actually have for example a, a study on attendee uh, floor engagement tactics that is useful mm-hmm. insights for organizers and exhibitors to understand how to maximize the experience for attendees at mm-hmm. in person b2b exhibitions that's something that was done pre covid 
Um, but in terms of our engagement methods with our organizer, with our stakeholder groups, again, you've got the access to the re reports that are available mm -hmm. where you do regular lectures. Um, we have a, an event called Predict, Sear Predict, that happens every fall. It'll be end of August, um, early September, um, mm -hmm. outside of D.C. at the MGM uh, Grants um, facility uh, mm -hmm. outside of, of Washington, D.C. That looks okay. forward. So I, I'm not sure what type of engagement you're looking for, or are you talking about it, marketing within mm -hmm. the B2B exhibition industry? Is that what you're looking for insights about? So we want to know about how the trade show marketing strategy fits mm -hmm. in with the engagement, customer engagement. So that's how, you know, how the marketing strategy is exactly working for uh, the customer engagement in your organization. Okay. So one initiative, and this one is global in scope. Mm -hmm. Anybody can download the reports from our website. The Omnichannel Marketing Insight mm -hmm. Study did this. We took a, a poll with attendees and exhibitors of events mm -hmm. before the pandemic, and we asked them, mm -hmm. While trade shows were shut down, what are you doing to the issue of engagement, right? Accessing from the attendee side, information resources to uh, accomplish their business purposes and for companies that sell market products, mm -hmm. how are they doing that? Um, so we have a snapshot of um, the engagement approaches while the pandemic shut down in-person activities. But when we mm -hmm. asked, are you coming back to in-person mm -hmm. events once they reopen, and the research found, and we've predicted and we're seeing it happen, that most exhibitors will be coming back because those are companies that use the channel for engagement with their customers and their prospects, right? Yeah. So digital has been, a, you know, an important element of marketing and will continue to be. And there's some yeah. shifts that are going to happen. But in-person activities from an exhibitor and the attendees side remain um, quite relevant and important to those that have used the channel. They're coming back um, to, you know, support their various needs. It, it, it gets very strong ratings in terms of value and effectiveness. So they're coming back. Um, and yeah. I suppose researches like these definitely help the company in modeling and remodeling their aspects and how they are going to move around in the current trends, like wherever being pre-COVID, post-COVID, how they should be practicing the different, you know, engagement being one of the most important factors for anybody, any event to engage at that point of time and also bring back the, you know, users back or the audience again for the next time. So, that right. Is so, but, but, you know, Radhika, the question then is what is engagement, right? Yes. I mean, so engagement when all you could do is stay in your house <laughs> and engage mm -hmm. digitally. It was yes. Zoom, Zoom, virtual. Very different though. And, you know, it can have its purposes and some habits that have formed while the pandemic shut everything down might yeah. continue. But, you know, engagement does include, we're, we're, we're social animals, we're human beings. Yes. We need to go back out and leave, right? And and engage face to face with each other. Agreed. And if one is shopping, you need to. For, yeah, I mean, depending on the product, right? But I mean, yes. you know, if we're talking about yogurts or pizza sauce, I mean, you want to taste, experience that in order to make exactly. the best investments for your business. Um, mm -hmm. And. But there's an on-the-channel overlay to the issue of engagement. What is engagement? And our research suggests that, yes, I mean, you know, everybody shops online now. So to integrate that element into an in-person, you know, event mm -hmm. is quite critical. There are tremendous opportunities for organizers yes. and exhibitors to capture, get credit for the purchases that flow from the activity that has in an in-person event. So those um, organizers and uh, brand marketers, I lecture, I was at Lit yeah. Exhibitor Live in Louisville saying, what are you doing <laughs> to make sure that, you know, you're capturing credit for yeah. the purchases and, and in using the, the devices 
online that can facilitate tracking. I yeah. think it's an exciting time to be in the trade show industry. And, you know, to your point of refining approaches in yeah. light of these trends. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. With this, I have another question for you. What are some of the most effective B2B event marketing tips and strategies business can use to drive engagement and generate more leads? Right. More leads for it. Look, it's all about personalization, right, Radhika? Yes. You need to agreed. show your prospects that you know them. And you need to be authentic, communicating in the language of the target audiences. I mean, um, e uh, vendors of all types have transformed uh, the world tremendously. So, you know, mm-hmm. Amazon, right? Almost by Alibaba, whatever. I mean, everything's personalized. Data is there to track so that they can have that communication. So it needs to be integrated. So number one, messaging, you mm-hmm. know, um, but this is, you know, been a longstanding trend given the disruption mm-hmm. digital media has uh, imposed on marketing. So there's that. And then keeping pace with the mar- digital marketing uh, tactics out mm-hmm. there. Right. But the other thing though, is retargeting. That's been a very useful mechanism, right. For, yes. however, Google Chrome is going to disrupt that, right. <laughs> Third party cookies. Yeah. That- you're aware, right? So supposedly maybe by the end of 2024, they keep deferring that, that deadline. But once yeah. they do that, this wonderful approach of serving up ads to prospective attendees yeah. or prospective customers of the exhibit is going to go poof. <laughs> yes. So it'll be an opportunity to come up with a new strategy to, you know, for first party cookie engagement. And like, I think that's an opportunity for trade shows, right? In any community, you know, if you've got that audience can be an effective uh, mechanism for those kinds of uh, engagements. Cause as we know, when you're pummeled with thousands of media messages, I mean, uh, repetitiveness is critical to capture the attention, right? So, yeah, it's a very challenging world to be in. Exciting, but... Challenging, exactly, exactly. I agree. And uh, this this very informative uh, information that you provided us that, you know, uh, the first party cookies are going to be one of the very important parts for, you know, using it in future for targeting, retargeting and whatnot for event ratios. So, yeah, of course, let's see how Google is going to help us there. And let's see how further the deadline is going to, you know. Go right. Ahead. We can so, put a bet on that, right? <laughs> yes. So with this, um, uh, as I would also like to know, how has the pandemic affected the B2B event marketing and what strategies have businesses used to adapt to the current situation? Well, Radhika, what I just talked about kind of speaks to that, right? So in essence, and I I encourage your listeners to download some of those reports from the the Omnichannel Report series because they provide insights. I mean, I would hunt for... Uh, there, there, there are some activities on the part of attendee professionals that mm-hmm. indicate um, areas one should want to experiment with, because although we see like virtual trade shows have kind of like gone yeah. away again, yeah. there'll be habits that persist, and within it will be opportunities that organizers and exhibitors should really think about to extend their engagement beyond yeah, yeah. just, you know, the event life cycle, you know, promoting mm-hmm. an event, um, but yeah. to extend that engagement year round. So there are insights there. There's also um, an entity, McKinsey. McKinsey Reports, have you ever mm-hmm. heard of them? Yeah. yeah. Um, so your listeners should download that. They had a great uh, report series related to um, the number of channels B2B buyers are relying on and, And they saw Mm -hmm. that there's been a doubling of channels, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's Mm -hmm. on the hunt. And so I'm imagining or expecting, not imagining, um, that that kind of behavior will persist and a willingness to make purchases online through a remote Mm -hmm. speaking to the opportunities that Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned. Now, we have analysis in our on a channel report series 
uh, looking at target personas of those coming back or that attend trade shows. And again, inherent in the analysis suggests that there's going to be younger, I say younger because I'm a boomer, but I mean, (laughs) (laughs) but um, like Gen X millennial folks, um, there's a higher incidence of those younger professionals looking to use a trade show channel for those activities that are closer to when you're ready to buy and even for the moment of purchase. So Mm -hmm. it's my sense that we're going to see uh, a more rigorous use of of in-person events activity, but it needs an overlay of omnichannel, right? Yes. I mean, I I like it. If you're going shopping, even for regular, Mm -hmm. you go to his... um, I don't know, a retail and store. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> you, it, it, you might have researched everything, pre, you know, yeah. before going, but then maybe you have somebody at home. For instance, I, I was shopping for a, a vacuum once yeah. and my husband couldn't leave. So I went to the store, I'm taking pictures, I'm sending it to him. What do you yeah. think? You know? And I mean, and then we ultimately pulled the trigger. Um, but I've, Oh, I mean, in-person retailing is not going away, but it will evolve. And I can't yeah. understand why you wouldn't want to integrate, you know, the power well, of this right. into yeah. your shopping. Amazon, yeah. check this yeah. out. Amazon has two stores in the apparel. Uh, there's mm-hmm. one in Columbus, Ohio. Are you familiar with it? Mm-hmm. You are the one that's telling me. Yeah, so Amazon is in Columbus, Ohio, and outside of Los Angeles. And Mm -hmm. they have two stores. And Amazon Prime, many, many people here in America have membership Prime. So they integrate the shopping experience, presenting um, clothing Mm -hmm. by influencer, social media Mm -hmm. influencer, and you basically they're tracking your shopping within the store. If you yeah. log in, you can try your clothes on. And if you don't like them, put them in the dressing room. Or if you like them, walk out of the store and you're charged for the clothes that you, that you've kept. So, oh. you know, how can technology again, but it, how can the trade show for evolve mm-hmm. to accommodate that consumer expectation and maximize the value of exhibiting at a show and the experience for the professionals that go, right? Take the the hassle out of that. Yeah. I think it's it's a pretty cool opportunity. Yeah. I feel that, you know, uh, like you highlighted, that the value that uh, an experience is going to get to the customer is the most important thing because whatever is happening, if it's not valuable, they're not going to come back nor they are going to, uh, you know, tell people to join in and then go ahead. And that's going to help an increase of customer. That's not going to happen. And also the re, uh, you know, visiting of events. So I feel that value out of any of the events that, you know, a person that's going in inside the event should uh, be very, uh, you know, at least some way effective for them, because if not, they're not going to come back and, that is something that, you know, I felt through your uh, conversation that it's uh, very important to integrate a uh, digital world into our physical events, but also uh, the value that we are ge- ge- giving to our uh, customers that are coming in or the audience that's coming in, at least some value. If they're not buying products, they should have the aesthetic value of looking at things and then maybe telling more people who are related to it that, you know, you can go, you can visit, and that could be helpful. So thank you for, uh, you know, re-mentioning the same. And uh, with this, uh, I think we can have the very last question. And that would be, what advice do you have for businesses looking to improve their trade show marketing strategies and drive more customer engagement? Like you just talked about. Well, inventory, take a look. What is the approach? Mm -hmm. Is it in line, you know, with, if it's an organizer, if we're talking about, Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the objectives for exhibiting? What are the objectives for attending? Does the show content align with those motivations? Um, So, uh, yeah, 
And I mean, it's not just sales leads from the exhibitor side. There's also yes. return on objectives, right? I yes. mean, sales lead generating uh, generation is always important. Yes. But mm-hmm. branding is a very important objective for exhibitors as well. So in essence, look at what are those objectives for exhibiting? Why do attendees come and they come for shopping and learning and making sure there's alignment between the two, yeah. right? From all that. Um, and then again, uh, to the issue of marketing, it's what I just said to the issue of assuring personalization and communicating mm-hmm. the value. Make sure you can deliver what you promise mm-hmm. or you'll only have yes. a one-time visitor or participant. And then be prepared to evolve. Each yeah. edition, things keep changing constantly. Yeah, so that's that's it. <laughs> that is so great. This conversation was something that we got to know so much about. Something more about organizations that we were not aware. And here, Nancy is here to help us with the same. Thank you, Nancy, for giving us so many insights, and thank you f- for being here, joining us on Eva Talks, and sharing your thoughts. And it was so great to have you and so great to actually learn a lot. And this was like an engaging, uh, you know, conversation where I was just engrossed in listening to what the, uh, you know, industry is holding for us and what values we are actually sharing around. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Well, thanks for the privilege. And I know I like to say a lot of things. I could say more, Mm -hmm. but thank you for this time. And I hope it's helpful to your listeners. Thank you again for everyone for joining in at Eva Talk and listening to this conversation. We'll be back again with many more chats. Thank you.